kindergarten curriculum is very play-based. So when I was planning my lessons for a virtual classroom, I had to keep in mind that students needed to be moving, they needed to have manipulatives, and they wanted to play. I found my students online really enjoyed scavenger hunts. For example, if we were learning shapes, I may have had students go around the house and find an item in their house that was shaped like a rectangle, a triangle, or a circle, and students had to quickly find an item and bring it back to the Zoom to share with the class. One thing to keep in mind when teaching kindergarten virtually is the students need a lot of brain breaks. Throughout the day, whether it was teaching a language lesson or math, we would embed different songs and dances so that students could get up and move their bodies. I personally love to use Go Noodle, which is a website that is free for teachers and has so many different dances and movement exercises that are connected to the Ontario curriculum. My teaching partner and I planned a variety of different virtual field trips for my students. We had our friends who taught drama, dance and art be guests into our classroom and they would lead a lesson. We also reached out to the Toronto Humane Society, the AGO, and many other community services to connect with our students. One other thing that my teaching partner and I incorporated while teaching virtually was having the family sign up to help lead a lesson. It's a great way to have the families be involved in your virtual classroom. Before COVID, families were able to volunteer inside of a classroom, and I wanted to make sure that my families still felt connected to our virtual classroom. So parents would sign up and they would lead either an art activity or read a story or possibly talk about their profession to the class. When planning lessons for a virtual classroom, it's important to be equitable. Each family has different materials at home and it's important for teachers to be aware of that. At the start of the year, I had asked my families to fill out a Google form to let me know what types of materials they had access to in their household. For example, during a measurement unit, my teaching partner and I asked students to use spoons that they would have at home to measure different items around their household. We thought of using tools that all students would have access to. With all of the challenges that come with learning how to use all these new platforms and teach, to, and teach children virtually, I also had to connect with another adult who I had never met in person before. It's very important when planning for a virtual classroom that you work as a team. I had asked my teaching partner what her strengths were and what her preferences were for teaching. With our schedules, we decided to meet once a week on Wednesdays to plan our lessons. One thing that we love about the Google Classroom is that you have access to Google Docs and Google Slides. When working on a Google Doc or Google Slide, you're able to add your coworker to the slide that you're working on and together in real time, while on Zoom, you can prepare your lessons together.